It is time now for a look at the day's top business stories with Brian Quinn. Brian, good to have you with us in studio this morning. You're starting with a big tumble for Apple's market value amid reports that China is banning iPhones for its government employees. Uh, indeed, Sharon, Apple shares have tanked over the past two days after the Wall Street Journal reported that a Beijing had banned government employees from bringing their iPhones to work. Bloomberg has now followed up with a report that that ban could be extended to employees of state state-owned firms and government-backed agencies. Now, Apple is still the world's most valuable public company. It's worth around $2.8 trillion. Its shares, though, are down nearly 6% this week. That's wiped out some $200 billion in market value. China accounts for nearly 20% of Apple's revenue. The news comes as the company is set to release its new iPhone 15. It also comes amid an ongoing tech trade war that has seen the U.S. impose increasing restrictions on imports and exports of key high-tech components with China. That's a tech war in which analysts say it now appears Apple has become the latest pawn. If there's now going to be I guess deterioration of relations um, still in this, you know, U.S. versus China sort of tip for tap trade uh, battle. Then now it seems that you know certain companies, such as Apple in this case, um, can be affected by it as well. It's not just some of the core technologies um, around semiconductors or around rare earths. It's now um, spread more mainstream into you know companies that produce products for for everybody. Now, China itself has been facing increasing economic headwinds as its real estate market and consumer spending hit the skids. One bright spot, though, is the country's auto industry, which has seen exports quadruple over the past three years, rising more than 85 percent so far this year alone. The annual IAA Mobility Auto Show is taking place this week in Munich, Germany, and Chinese manufacturers are now a major presence there. They're increasingly targeting the European market after acquiring brands like Volvo and MG, using their edge in electric vehicles as major European firms like Volkswagen have lagged behind. The German auto industry overall is struggling. Production shrank by 3.5% in June, with orders down 27% this year. Berlin has rushed to cut corporate taxes in a bid to prop up the sector. Industry officials say they're facing a host of challenges. We have a lot of challenges. We had the COVID pandemic and especially here in Europe, we have the war from Russia against Ukraine. And this also causes uh, difficulties for the supply chain, not the energy prices, uh, uh, but uh, there was a delivery of energy. Uh, but uh, we have really intensive discussion here in Europe. What's the future of our energy security? Let's get a check in on the day's trading action now. Asian indexes lost ground Friday. The Nikkei in Tokyo ending the day down nearly 1.2% as Japan's second quarter GDP growth was revised down from 6 to 4.8%. That ongoing tech trade war between the U.S. and China weighing on tech stocks across the region with the Shanghai Composite and the Kospi in Seoul both down slightly. European indexes, though, opening in positive territory as markets here try to break a seven-day losing streak. Investors remain on edge over the potential for further interest rate hikes from the U.S. Federal Reserve amid continued inflationary pressures there. Lower than expected European growth weighing on equities as well. But all major indexes are up around a quarter to a third of a percent at the open Friday. Finally, for business, Airbnb says it's been forced to reject requests for stays in New York City this week amid new rules for short-term rentals. The restrictions are aimed at tackling a severe shortage of affordable housing in the city. Many residents have welcomed the move. The company, though, says the regulations are already making it harder for visitors to find an affordable place to stay. Carolyn Lambele reports. The Big Apple on a small budget might be a thing of the past. New regulations on short-term rentals came into effect this week. Airbnb says the measures amount to a de facto ban, but the news came as a relief for many New Yorkers bearing the brunt of a deep housing crisis. I mean, it's hard enough right now to find a place for, for us New Yorkers out here to live now. And so it's a good thing, definitely, for sure. Locals understand the impact that Airbnb is having in their communities, and um, it's absolutely not sustainable. Not all New Yorkers are of the same mind. And already, visitors are grumbling. This is one of the most populated travel destinations in the world, so it didn't make any sense to me at all. I mean, I come up from Birmingham, Alabama, about five times a year. So uh, I'm always looking for options. And hotel rooms are outrageous these days. 
hosts must register with the city and must also commit to being physically present for the duration of any stay under 30 days. Bookings are capped at two guests. Any host violating the new rules could face several thousands of dollars in fines. Airbnb had fought the rules in court, but the lawsuit was dismissed over the summer. Authorities say the measures, which affect all rental platforms, were necessary. Uh, the city of New York is in an affordable housing crisis that we could only resolve by building new housing, but also by keeping the housing that we currently have, preserving it. As of early this week, few hosts were able to successfully register with the city. Under 300 were given the go-ahead, out of more than 3,800 applicants. And as we were just pointing out there, uh, Sharon, off uh, off air, uh, hotels are expensive in New York, but Airbnb is also quite expensive in the city. Uh, if you try to look these days, it gets uh, very, very pricey to stay. Yeah, even without these new rules, it's very expensive place to visit and to stay for tourists. But good news, as you say, for people who are living True. in the city. Brian Quinn, thank you so much from that for that. That's Brian from our business desk.